is functions of several variables. So let's start out with the basics. Notation you've seen before is f of x. f of x represents a function in terms of x. Example, you might see something like y equals 4x squared. y in this case is the same as f of x. This is a function of one variable. What we're going to do now, which I think you've not seen before, is z is going to be a function of x and y. going to be a function of two variables. So some examples. Area of a triangle, so area is one half base times height, that's a function of two variables. Area is a function of the base and the height. To write this in function notation, we would write f of b comma h is one half base times height. So that z equals f of x, y. Z, we call the dependent variable. x and y, we call the independent variables. So you guys have seen that notation before and definitely heard those terms. We're looking at functions of more than two variables, or more than one variable, rather. So it could be two, three variables, etc. So if you have a function of three variables, maybe you call it w. That could be f of x, y, z. be a function of three variables. We are mainly going to focus on functions of two and three variables. We're not going to go much beyond that. Important piece to know is that the restrictions of the independent variables determine the domain of f. So if I ask you to find the domain of the function, you're going to look at the domains of each of the independent variables or the restrictions on the independent variables. So here's our example. We are going to find the domain of f of x, y is equal to natural log of the quantity x, y. There's two different ways that you can express the domain. One is in words, and then one is in a picture. Natural log, we only take the natural log of quantities bigger than zero. <coughs> so we need x, y to be greater than zero. So like I said, there's three different ways that we can show that. One is in a picture. So if we look at a coordinate plane, where does our domain fall? So where are our allowable points? So where is x, y? First and third quadrant. What about the axes? No. So that's one way to show the domain. Another way is in words. So the domain is all ordered pairs. in quadrants one and three, but not on the axis. So that's the second way to express the domain. Third way is with a little bit of mathematics shorthand. So D is all the XY points such that XY is greater than zero. So all of those are different ways to express the domain. WebAssign is going to ask you to do multiple different versions. Just please use whatever form you are asked on a test. Either I will tell you I want a graph, I want it in words, or I'll let you choose. Does that make sense? OK, great. But we're going to do another example, and then we're going to move on and talk about graphing. OK. 
So this second example, we are looking at f of x, y, z is equal to x divided by the quantity square root of 9 minus x squared minus y squared minus z squared. Okay, that numerator we don't need to worry about. Denominator is what we need to worry about. A few things. Denominator cannot be 0. And then everything underneath the square root has to be positive. So we know that 9 minus x squared minus y squared minus z squared has to be greater than 0 because we don't want to divide by 0. If I move the 9 over and divide everything by negative 1, I get x squared plus y squared plus z squared is less than 9. So if we're expressing the domain two different ways, one is that math shorthand, the domain is all x, y, z, such that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is less than 9. It's one way to express the domain. Other way is in words. What is this in words? Like if we were to graph that, what would it look like? This, it's a sphere, it's everything inside the sphere that has a radius of 3. So it's the set of all <coughs> x, y, z inside the sphere of radius 3, which is centered at the origin. Okay, also with problems like this, you might ask to, be, to find a specific value, like maybe find f of 2, 1, 1. This should be pretty intuitive. Plug in 2, 1, and 1. If you do that, you get 2 divided by the square root of 3. Bless you. Okay. Questions on domain before we move on to graphing? Great. We're going to do some graphing then. So let's say that z is our function of two variables, functions of x and y. That is going to represent a surface in three space. So for this next example, we're going to do two different graphs. First one, f of x, y is equal to the square root of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. So my suggestion to you would be to first replace f of x, y by z, just because it's easier to work with. OK. This is not anything that we've seen before. So we might have to do a little manipulation to get an equation that we've seen or that is familiar to us. So we're going to square everything. So we get z squared equals 4 subtract x squared subtract y squared, which gives us x squared plus y squared add z squared equals 4. Now, that's a sphere centered at origin with a radius of 2. That is not what our initial surface is, though. Why? Hmm? Yeah, so how does that affect the graph? Okay, so what I wanted us to notice is that that f of x, y has to be at least 0 because it's a square root. So that is telling us that z has to be at least 0. So rather than a sphere, we have a hemisphere. That is my best 
interpretation of a hemisphere. Second one. f of x, y is equal to 1, subtract x, subtract 1 half y. Anyone know what this is going to be? If I graph this, what is it going to be? If nothing squared, all linear terms, or what? Plane. It's going to be a plane. My best suggestion for planes is to find all the intercepts. So make y and z 0, find x. Make x and z 0 and find y. Make x and y 0 and find z. So if I make z 0 and I make y 0, I'm going to get x to be 1. If I make z 0 and x 0, I'm going to get y to be 2. If I make these two 0, I get z to be 1. Have you guys graphed planes before? Were there any like this in your, on your web assign? Okay, one person nodded yes, so I'm gonna say maybe. This is generally what we do. We're gonna plot those three intercepts, and then you sketch out a triangle. So obviously your plane continues, but that gives the position of the plane. Okie dokie. Any questions on graphing before we move on to our last topic? Uh, our last two topics. No? We're okay? Okay, next one. We're going to talk about level curves and contour plots. Let's say we have some figure like this. And that is the graph of z equals f of x, y. So basically it's like a big blob. Can you guys picture that? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to take a plane and we're going to slice it through horizontally. So we're going to take a plane maybe and slice it through here. So that is the plane z equals k. Okay, and do we recognize that when we do that, there's going to be an intersection of the plane and the surface? Might be something like this. That's where they intersect. Okay. So the intersection of the plane and the surface that's called a level curve. So a level curve is when you slice a plane through the figure or through the surface rather, it's the figure that results. So for example, if we look at z equals x squared plus y squared, my first question for you is if we were to graph this, what would this be? It's from last chapter, well really the first chapter. The paraboloid, yes, paraboloid. Yeah. Spherical paraboloid, remember we made z a whole bunch of different values, you always got a circle, but z is always positive, so looks something like that. Okay, if we wanted to find an, a level curve, we would make z different values. So maybe we would plug in 1. That would give us a circle, that's one level curve. Maybe we would make z 4. That's another circle, it's another level curve. So every time we put a plane through here, 
the intersection is always going to be a circle. Do you guys see that? So if we were to graph them, these are going to be all the level curves. So those are the set of level curves. Each one is going to correspond to a specific z value. So that's the way you find a level curve. So you might be told on WebAssign, find the level curve for z equals 4. In this case, it's, it's a circle with radius 2. Okay, here, where we have a bunch of different level curves written, that's called a contour plot. So a contour plot is when you sketch the set of level curves. So as soon as you sketch more than one, you sketch multiple of them, that's called a contour plot. So the contour plot for the one that we just did if we make z1, we get a circle of radius 1. If we make z4, we get a circle of radius 2. If we make z9, we get a circle of radius 3. And keep going. Now, whenever you draw a contour plot, I made these kind of small, but with each of these lines, each of these level curves, you need to label z. So this outer one is when z is 9. This one is when z is 4. This little one is when z is 1. Okay, you will be asked questions based on contour plots. So for example, a lot of times what you'll be asked is there will be a point somewhere on the contour plot. And I'm going to ask you some information about that point. For example, what happens as I move toward the origin? So imagine this point is somewhere on the figure. As I move towards the origin, what is happening on the figure to the point? You guys are making this way complicated. Z is decreasing. The point's going down. Yeah, that's all I'm looking for. Whew. So also, as I move away from the origin, the point moves up the figure. Now do you know what I'm asking for? OK. Great. Ready for another contour plot? Just going to review some uh, pre-calc skills. specifically some graphing. Okay, we are going to sketch the contour plot. Of f of x, y equals x squared subtract 4y squared. Okay, so to sketch this contour plot, you're going to choose different values of z. The one that is probably best to start with is if z equals 0. If z equals 0, you get x squared equals 4y squared. So you take the square root, and you get x equals plus or minus 2y. What is that? Two lines. It's probably better to think of it like this. It's off the screen. Great. Thanks for letting me know. Okay, so we're going to start by graphing that. I would make your graph on the larger side because we have some other things that we're going to need to graph. Remember to label which one that comes from. Okay, I'm going to tell you the next best one to choose is 4. So we'll do that one next. If 
we choose z to be 4, we get 4 equals x squared, subtract 4y squared, divide by 4, so we get 1 equals x squared over 4, subtract y squared. What is that? Come on guys, what is that a graph of? This is a hyperbola. Okay, good. What else do we know about this hyperbola? Which direction is it opening? Let's start with that. Does it open up, down, or left, right? We don't remember hyperbola is so good? Yeah, it's whichever one comes first or whichever one is positive. So x direction, it's going to open left, right. If you put x to be 2, you'll get y to be 0. So that's this point here, that point there. So your hyperbola is opening like this. If we chose z equals 4, what might be another good one to choose? Yeah, z equals negative 4. What do you think we're going to get? <laughs> so divide by negative 4. When we do, y is going to become positive, so that'll be y squared subtract x squared over 4. <coughs> okay, so this one is a... Hyperbola again, if we make x to be 0, we get y to be plus or minus 1. So this will be kind of like your vertex of your hyperbola. And at this point, you should get the picture. So for your contour plot, there's going to be a whole bunch of more hyperbolas going up, down, and then left, right. Okay, questions on sketching contour plots? Are you going to ask me when we're going to use this? No. Okay, what's your question? <laughs> uh, why is that one? If, um, why is this one and the other one just x to be 2? If you plug in a 0 for x here, you get y to be 1. Is that enough information? So then here, if you make y 0, x is plus or minus 2. So it's just the intercept. Okay, if I'm at the origin and I move left, what is happening if I am on the graph? Like if I'm walking on the graph? Yeah, Z is increasing and moving up. If I'm at the origin and I move along the positive or negative Y axis, what's happening if I'm on the surface? Z is decreasing, I'm going down. So what I also could ask you is I could give you this contour plot and ask you what the figure is. So what is the figure? It is a hyperbolic parabola. That is the saddle, yes. OK, we got a few more things to talk about. One of the things we were going to talk about is was graphing hyperbolas? Do we want to graph hyperbolas anymore, or do you think you are OK? You got it? OK, great, good. I didn't really want to talk about that, so it's easier for me. Last thing we need to talk about is what is a level surface? OK, if we have two variables. If we look at the graph, we can find level curves that are two-dimensional. So gra the graphs are surfaces we can project as level curves. So here's what I mean by that. If I have a function of two variables, the graph is three-dimensional. The level curve, then, is two-dimensional with me? Okay, if I have three variables, 
It's a four-dimensional graph. We are not graphing that, obviously. We're going to look at level curves, but instead of level curves, we can project level surfaces. So a 3D graph has a two-dimensional level curve. A four-dimensional graph has a three-dimensional level surface. So here's what I mean by that. Let's consider the function of three variables to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared. We're going to describe the level surfaces. So instead of inputting for z this time, you're going to input for f. So maybe we make f1. So we get 1 equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared. What's another good value to use for f? In this case, 4. Eventually, we want to generalize when f is just some value k. Looking at all of these, what are the level surfaces? Spheres. Yeah, so in words, we would say the level surfaces are spheres centered at the origin. What happens as we move away from the origin in any direction? Uh, close. F increases, the value of F. So as you move away from the origin, the value of F increases. Okay. Ready to do one more example and then we're done? Yeah? Don't sound so excited. <coughs> I think this is what you were looking at. That one? You're welcome. Okay, last example. You are going to use the contour map. To estimate the value of f of 2 comma 3. Thank you for all of your feedback. <laughs> I don't recall asking for it, but thank you anyway. Okay. Do you understand how to read this map? Not what it looks <laughs> Okay. This is a contour plot. So this outer circle is when we passed through the plane z equals 50 on the surface. That was the intersection. This one here is when we passed through the plane z equals 40. This one z equals 30. This is z equals 10. So those are all the level curves put together onto a, a contour plot, or also called a contour map. OK, here's the way we're going to go about this. We need to find out where f of 2, 3 happens. So f of 2, 3 happens about here. So it's not quite 50, kind of close to 30, kind of close to 40. I would estimate it to be maybe 47, 48, because it's close to the 50. Anything that you gave me that was around 50, but less than 50, I would accept. Sound good? So if you told me 30, I would not take it. 
47, 48, 49, all fine. Okay, questions on the first section?